Hello and welcome back to Car Rental University. I am your host, Alex Withrow. Um, I just want to share some brief news with you guys. Uh, I just got off the call about an hour ago with uh, Get Around and their new Director of Claims and Insurance. Uh, before I get into that, click below, grab the free PDF, the five things you must do before you start a car rental business. So let's talk about this. Um, I just had, I, I just had, it was on the call for uh, Get Around's new uh, Director of Claims. His name's, uh, pardon me for looking down, I'm just looking at all my notes here. Uh, his name is Dennis Lewis. He is four months into the job. Um, he has an interesting pedigree. He comes from uh, the claims division. I think he was a director of claims at Airbnb. And he was previously before that at Progressive Insurance as a claims adjuster for 15 years. So I think uh, Dennis's pedigree in terms of being the new get around director of claims and insurance, I think he's a great fit for the job. And uh, just based on you know his... Uh, demeanor and his knowledge on the call. I think uh, he knows his stuff pretty well. So let's get into this. I'm going to share some notes with you. I took a lot of notes on this call. Um, <clears throat> so he, they made the point that the regulations on the rideshare industry are changing a lot. And so therefore, it's been kind of herky-jerky over the last five or 10 years. Uh, the rideshare industry is only about 10 or 15 years old. So therefore, the insurance products that are offered for rideshare are pretty new and and are not super developed yet. And I, I would say, in my experience, you know, I started in this business about five years ago. Um, the insurance situation was very tricky back then. Uh, now it is much better. Um, you know, it's just a, it's there's lots of products now that can accommodate what you are doing as a person who wants to start a car rental business. So, all that said. Um, <clears throat> Nothing's changed in terms of get around. One, they require that you report claims within seven days. Um, one interesting point that they brought up that I thought was uh, impressive is that they said that the average, uh, the get around claims cycle in the last two years has gone from 70 days down to seven days uh, in terms of the average. Uh, that's pretty impressive. So. The last time I filed a claim with Get Around was probably about a year ago, and the whole process uh, in terms of the accident and getting the car fixed, it took about a month to fix the whole situation. So um, sounds like things are getting even better now in terms of the, uh, the, the, the speed at which they are resolving claims. Now, they also said that they use Sedgwick as a third-party uh, insurance administrator for larger claims, multi-car incidents, and that they handle mostly the single car incidents. Now, um, I've had a fair amount of experience working with Sedgwick through HireCar, uh, because Sedgwick works with HireCar as well. Sedgwick, in my opinion, is very hit or miss. Um, they are a company, if you get the right insurance adjuster, no problems, you know, it's, it's all good. If you get a, an annoying uh, or difficult insurance adjuster, I've had them before at Sedgwick, that is also, it can be a total clown show. So uh, I'm not crazy about Cedric, but um, you know, I guess they are probably the, the leader and most well equipped in this industry to handle these types of claims. Um, <clears throat> they said if you are a host on Get Around, um, things that you can do to win a favorable judgment in a claim, um, do a timely claim report, obviously, as soon as possible. Uh, inspect cars in between trips. You know, the challenge with get around in terms of inspecting cars in between trips is that their system is so fluid and so seamless that it's really easy to just snap off like five rentals in a row and have people come in, out, in, out, in, out because everyone just lets themselves in and out of the car. But if somebody leaves a mess in the car, uh, that's a problem. So, um, you know, if you're from Get Around, um, I would recommend, and I, I, this is my solution to this. On the Get Around app, when they close out their trip, their, the guest, they should take a picture of the condition of the interior of the car. And if they leave it in a shit condition or trash, you should just dock them and give them like, you know, uh, maybe a two strike system where if they do that one time, um, that's a warning. If they do it a second time, then they're, they, they're off the platform. There, there are ways to handle this. Um, but they, they talked about, you know, how do we, uh, they said, you know, it's on the host to, 
keep the car clean and whatnot. And yes, I agree. I, I don't disagree with that. I just think there's, there's ways to adjust the accountability system to make this a non-issue. But, um, you know, they always say take four corner shots of, of the car, put a piece of paper up against any dents to show the indentation, because sometimes pictures don't reflect that. Uh, they do have a claims manager tool. So if you have a, a multi-car fleet, you can see different claims going on um, on the website. Uh, they talked about the claim admin fee of $100. And I know this is a big problem and a big complaint for anyone who's worked with Get Around because what happens is that, you know, if you file a claim and they give you a, a judgment where they're going to make you pay for the damage, they also charge you 100 bucks on top of that, which is like adding insult to injury. And I, I think it's just infuriating. And that's been a big complaint. Now, in my opinion, I just think they've handled the communication around this poorly. In, on the call today, they said, look, we see this $100 claims fee as a deductible. Okay, I get that. Like, if it's going to be a $100 deductible, then just call it a $100 deductible. Like, don't, because this, this surprise claims fee on people, it pisses people off and you alienate the hosts. Just call it a $100 deductible. Like, that's, I, I, that's how you solve that, in my opinion. Uh, but I think their fear is that... <clears throat> When people compare their insurance plan to say Turo, Turo at the 60 uh, you know, plan level has a $0 deductible. So technically, GetAround actually does have a $100 deductible. So anyway, I, I think just the, the way they handle the communication about that is, is not the best. But we, they also talked about gap insurance, which was interesting. Uh, so if you're not familiar, what is gap insurance? Gap insurance is, let's say your car is worth... $20,000, okay? And then let's say um, when the car gets hit by another car and is totaled, um, you still owe, let's say, $22,000 on the car. So there's a $2,000 gap in terms of the car's value versus what you actually owe. Gap insurance would cover that $2,000 delta, uh, therefore you wouldn't have to pay that out of pocket. So. They said they do not, they do not offer gap insurance. So that is something that you need to kind of keep your eye on if you're going to work with get around is if you are underwater on the value of the car, um, you got to be careful because if it gets totaled, that's coming out of your pocket. Um, <clears throat> and they also addressed uh, guest quality and getting better guests. Uh, I think this is, this is something they need to work on a little, not, not bad. They're not as bad as Hire Car, <laughs> uh, but they're not as good as Turo either. Um, they're kind of in the middle in terms of the caliber of guests uh, currently. They said that all guests now are, have verified IDs. That's good. Um, they are uh, improving their process for pre and post trip inspection. That's good. Um, they're now, interestingly enough, they're building a predictive model uh, that can determine how effectively someone can pay for an extension uh, or, or rental or not. So uh, they call it the, quote, propensity to pay. And so they said that basically of all of their guests, of all the renters of the cars, they can basically score them in terms of who is the most likely uh, to pay uh, for the rental or who's not able to pay for an extension. So um, they said they're going to most likely take their most high-risk uh, people off the platform. So that's... Uh, I think that's a, uh, a positive development. I think they can, there's a lot of things that they should do to improve uh, the caliber of guests. And that's better for us as well as hosts. And then they said, you know, for the 2022 plan, they're, they're planning to move more claims in-house. And I think, um, you know, this guy, Dennis Lewis, uh, who was previously the director of claims at Airbnb, in my opinion, Airbnb is the standard for, um, you know, a website that is where you're sharing an asset. I think Airbnb, and I've uh, worked with Airbnb over the years, and I think it's, uh, for the most part, a really good site, and they have a really good system. They've been around longer as well. So they've had a lot more time to iron out the kinks, whereas Get Around, I think, is a little more of a baby company. Uh, they've been around, I believe, about 10 years. So they are uh, still working out these things. But I, like I said, overall, I think that their claim cycle, adjusting that from 70 days average down to seven days in the last two years, that's pretty impressive. Uh, things are moving in the right direction to get around. Like I said, 
Uh, I think that Get Around, I've always said this, Get Around really has the potential to be a, a fantastic company that can really compete with um, Turo. What I wish they would do, I wish they would give more insurance coverage options the way Turo does. Uh, I think Turo's you know, system of giving you five choices for five different insurance plans is awesome. I wish Get Around would bump that up to maybe at least three. Um, but you know, the fact that Dennis Lewis comes from Airbnb uh, and also has 15 years in the insurance industry, I think he's the right guy and has the pedigree to turn this ship around for Get Around. So, all that and more, uh, keep, <clears throat> click below, grab the PDF, the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. I will catch you in the next video. Thank you.